Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yep, it's been a week since I've done my last review, but I did actually post free commercial breaks, all action pack with Tech War. <laughs> I thought, why not? Because, you know, I do post uh, several commercial breaks that I found online, and sometimes I even put commercial breaks for my VHS tapes. So it could be from any other uh, station, like pretty much. Uh, in the US. I mean usually it would be the Los Angeles stations but because you know I'm from Los Angeles which I live in you know, part of the, the Los Angeles County but I do post some other commercial breaks from other states you know like Alabama or Oregon New York um, Michigan and there are either 80s, 90s, and even 2000s commercials that I could find. But hey, it's really nice to find something like that. And I always encrypted with HD. I had to do editing, and yes, sometimes I had to change the theme because of YouTube's copyright policy. I really don't like how they do that. But what can you do? I sometimes post that on BitChute as well. And in fact, I do post it over there, but... So that way, you know, I can be safe over there. Um, the internet was shut down. I couldn't go on for a while due to the fact that um, our uh, internet router was out of date. So what we did was we ordered uh, a brand new AT&T U-verse um, Wi-Fi internet router. And it's the beast, by the way. It's a lot bigger and it even runs smoother and faster than before and it is a lot better than our previous router that we only had for eight years and I, I guess sometimes we have to switch here back and forth these days so we can get better speed <laughs> yeah so now I can watch uh, my Fire Stick TV that I have because I do watch that directly from it and I can even um, Go on the internet and go on YouTube and even post some more videos and stuff and even bit you and all that. And even go to Facebook and Twitter and all. So I just have some time. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I even watch some movies um, either way. But I still have my physical media, so I always watch a lot. However, I did finally check out the movie I've been waiting for for a while. Um, upon its release, but thank goodness I took the risk to, to check it out, despite the fact the feeders have been shut down you know, due to the coronavirus pandemic that's going around. I just hope this whole thing will be over, and I mean, I, I'm glad I'm not sick, but I hope I don't end up getting caught by it, and I think we're going to get better. Let's hope so, because I want to stay young and healthy as I could. And, uh, I mean, it's best not to panic, though, okay? Because I know they've been doing this stuff. You know, they've been giving us a lot of lectures and everything. You know, they tell us to stay home. They tell us to find everything that we need. We had to go around to the stores and purchase everything we could. You know, like toilet paper, paper towels, you know, hand sanitizers, all that stuff. So, we can, so that way, in case, you know, we need them. Yeah. And that's... That's always becoming the biggest problem of them all. So, okay. But enough said for that. Um, I did finally check out Birds of Prey and the Fatabulous Impersation of One Harley Quinn. Yes. With Margot Robbie returns as Harley Quinn, who happens to be the notorious... Uh, Gangster, and also the love interest of the Joker. Yeah, I mean, she's even a lot crazier than the Joker, per se. But she does have her actual persona. I mean, she even narrates the film, tells her point of view. Only this time, she teams up with three um, characters that's part of the Birds of Prey. Uh, the Huntress... Black Canary and Renee Matoya. Yeah. 
So one is the uh, the crossbow killer. The other one is a uh, burlesque singer. And the next one is the cynical detective. Um, they're joining in to save a young girl who's a pickpocket named Cassandra Kane from the evil crime lord of Gotham City that's even worse than the Joker Black Mask yeah so uh, as you know I mean Margot Robbie played Harley Quinn uh, since the movie Suicide Squad uh, now for those who don't know she's an Australian actress she's been in films like the Wolf of Wall Street, the Martin Scorsese, the Martin Scorsese film with uh, Leo DiCaprio, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. I just like to call him Leo. <laughs> um, but then she went to films like um, Focus with uh, Will Smith, which, interesting enough, um, he went on to play Deadshot in Suicide Squad. So this was their second film together. <laughs> Um, but she's done some other work. Um, she even did the film I, Tonya. But she is definitely um, a great actress. So, so far so good. She's been doing several movies. And she just recently did uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, the recent uh, Quentin Tarantino film. So it's nice to see that she's getting a lot of a sense of work. So, um... And I know Suicide Squad has been criticized when it came out. You know, this was my highly anticipated film that year. Um, I'm actually one of the several people out there who actually enjoy that film. I really did. I mean, despite the flaws it got, I understand. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. I mean, for the characters. Um... And I know maybe they could have done a little better too, but that's fine. It's the best we could have. I mean, I guess because of the whole DC Marvel debate and and the fact that Rotten Tomatoes is just going way too far with criticism here. I mean, I know because of the the tomato meter percentage, but either way. It's also note to be the first R-rated film after uh, Joker <laughs> for for DC's, uh, well, in, in for the DC Extended Universe, though, that is. Um, but I know we did have Constantine uh, with uh, Keanu Reeves, and that was a long time ago, and I know we had uh, B for Vendetta, so they're part of that, under Vertigo. But this is indeed part of the uh, DC Extended Universe, part of the DC Extended Universe to provide that. So it's nice to see that. So it actually has a lot of swearing, yeah, profanity, and it does have a lot of uh, violence, all bloody, um, sometimes gory too, and you know, and it really takes, they knew that they wanted to have a stronger uh, movie than, than just being a lot tamer for its PG-14 rating that they have to go for. So to me this one actually really works. But it is essentially a Harley Quinn movie rather than just being the origins of the Birds of Prey story for the DC Comics. Anyway, now let's begin. Stars Margot Robbie Mary Elizabeth Winstead, yeah, from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, along with Final Destination Free and Sky High, among others. Jarnette Smarlet Bell, for those who don't know, she was from the short lived TV series on ABC called On Her Own. She later went on to do the movie Eve's By You with Samuel Jackson and Lynn Whitfield, actually, one of her best performances. Rosie Perez, yes, she was from White Man Can't Jump. She was also in the movie Do the Right Thing, along with On Team Hearts, 
Yeah, with Christian Slater and Marissa Tomei. It could happen to you with Nicolas Cage and and Bridget Fonda. And of course, she played a crooked cop in Pineapple Express, but this time she does play a different cop. Chris Messina, who was in the um, Argo, uh, along with Julie and Julia, and Vicky Christina Barcelona, among other films. I mean, even You Got Mail. Ella J. Basco, Ali Wong, Ewan McGregor, yes, from Train Spotting, along with uh, A Lifeless Ordinary with Cameron Diaz, and he went on to do the Star Wars um, prequel trilogy, yeah, as Obi Wan Kenobi, <laughs> with The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. And, of course, he's been in other films, too. Uh, Stephen Williams. I haven't seen him in a long time. He was from 21 Jump Street. The TV series uh, that launched uh, Johnny Depp's stardom. And he's also in the TV show called L.A. Heat. And other stuff, too. It's nice to see him again. It's been a long time. Um... Dana Lee and Derek Wilson. Um, it's written by Christina Hodson. For those who don't know, she just previously wrote uh, Bumblebee. Yeah, the recent uh, Transformers movie. Focusing on the character, which I really enjoy. And I know she wrote um, Unforgivable with Katherine Heigl. Yeah, I would stay away from that garbage. Basically, it's a poor ripoff of The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. And it's directed by Kathy Yon. This is actually um, her first, uh, this is the first Asian woman to direct a DC film because she just previously directed a movie called Dead Pigs and she's done some short films. So, so she's uh, a Chinese American director. And I think she's going to be working on her next film under uh, A24 Films. The movie begins when Suicide Squad team had defeated the main villainess, Etantris, that was played by Carla Delevingne. I'm also trying to save her, too, in a way. The Joker, who was previously played by Jared Leto, which led to a controversy and, and some criticism upon his character thinking that this was going to be another competition between the previous Jokers, well, besides Cesar Romero, but that's a different story, um, from all the previous Batman films, uh, Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger. Jack Nicholson, of course, was playing a gangster named Jack Napier before he became the Joker. And then we got Heath Ledger, who's just basically the Joker. <laughs> you know, who's was a <laughs> an arsonist. But this one is just basically a gangster with grills and giving that shock uh, exterior here. But he has broken up with Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie, as he's telling her point of view through her narration. Is being thrown out of the streets of Gotham City. It was taken in by an elderly owner of a Taiwanese restaurant named Doc, played by Dana Lee. So she was feeling very sad and depressed, but somehow recovers from her relationship. And by cutting her hair, you know, giving a different style of hers, because she her previous style was basically a blonde pick hair, a blonde uh, pigtails, uh, blench in a little bit with uh, magenta and light blue, you know, wearing Daddy's Little Monster shirts. You know, those uh, Daisy Dukes, you know, short shorts, you know, also a mixture of uh, <laughs> magenta blue and also some diamonds and all that. You know, she also has a bat as a weapon so she could defeat all these guys out there or gals or whatever. I mean, considering how, how sassy and sexy she could be. 
and crazy too, insanely crazy. That sort of thing. But she also um, adopted a spotted hyena as a pet, named him after Bruce Wayne. He had the the most uh, billionaire playboy of Gotham City, and was started to take roller derby, you know, trying to earn her big. But until one night, she got drunk at a local nightclub that's owned by a gangster named Roman Solanus, known as Black Mass, played by Ewan McGregor. And yeah, he's even worse than the Joker. Um, which at this point on, she actually cripples uh, Roman's driver through uh, his legs after he insulted her. She actually meets a beautiful burlesque singer named Dinah Lance, known as Black Canary, played by Jernette Smollett Bill, who later rescues Harley, already being intoxicated from an attempted abduction, which that leads to later that night when she actually blows up the ace chemical pant that started the origin, which was known simply as a former certified psychiatrist, Harleen Quinzel, which she did an interview with um, the Joker at uh, Arkham Asylum before they eventually fell in love. And that's where he was the one who actually took um, Harley there, you know, having to jump all the way, you know, sort of started to dive all the way down into the toxic um, waste that they put in, the toxic chemical, and that's how she changed her appearance. So, because, you know, she didn't want to be reminded by the Joker himself, you know, all the memories that she once had. So, anyway, being spotted, uh, so Roman was impressed by Donna's skills and actually appointed her as his new driver. Um, of course, already probably announced of their breakup already with Joker and Harley, since he noticed that. But meanwhile, we did meet a Gotham City Police uh, Department detective. He was an alcoholic and cynical named Rene Montoya, who was played by Rosie Perez, who investigates a series of mob killings that's carried out by a vigilante which is a crossbow killer known as the Huntress whose real name is Helena Bernelli, the orphan daughter of gangster Franco played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead so they're about to go after her she then found uh, Harley's necklace at the scene of the crime um, that's during the ace chemical explosion she actually notes that Harley is actually in danger without Joker's protection, but approaches Dinah about being an informant on Roman from them, but Dinah rejects the offer completely. So then uh, Roman had sent off um, Dinah and the sadistic right-hand man Victor Salza, who's played by Chris Messina, to retrieve a diamond that's embedded with account numbers to the fortune of the Berenelli crime family, all which were massacred years ago, which led to what was going on with Helena, because she was the only survivor. And that's where she started um, killing the, the entire uh, family of the, the whole mob after what they did to her family completely. So this was the act of revenge. Of course, we do meet a young pickpocket, an Asian girl named Cassandra Kane, known as Cass, that's played by Ella J. Basco, who's going around, you know, stealing everyone's wallets and all that. And then next thing you know, she stole the diamond that Roman was about to go after, and acts definitely, which was, of course, from Victor, and just swallows it down the hole and she got arrested by the cops. Then uh, Harley suddenly came um, bringing in with a variety of firework inspired non-lethal grenade launcher rounds to shoot 
all these cops around, you know, with uh, color smokes, with confetti, um, even the pink balls. So that way you'll be able to go after uh, Cass. So now um, both Harley and Cass um, were about to escape, but then they went up straight into the evidence warehouse where they have been ambushed by a number of Gotham City's uh, thugs, basically like a biker gang of sorts, um, going after Harley and her. That's what led to all these uh, amazing fight scenes here and there. Yes, even started shooting at her and even through the uh, all this um, tons of drugs, you know, cocaine, and that's what caused her to go completely insane and crazy. Started beating the shit out of them and escape as soon as it possible and go into a, a local uh, market just to get all the supplies even the, the lacks of this so that way you know Cass will be able to drink some so sh she'll be able to shit enough to get the diamond out of her body yeah <laughs> so they had to stay over at um, Doc's restaurant's place yeah she actually has her own room you know, just watching cartoons, eating cereal, doing all this other stuff, protection and all, until somehow some random guy just started shooting a, a grenade straight out of uh, her room. And Doc suddenly just decided to move on through his uh, Taiwanese restaurant business because, you know, he actually has a new job. So now Harley and, and um, as well as Cass are all alone. The Huntress actually came by um, earlier just to find where Harley is at, along with uh, Cass. So now um, this is what led to the biggest uh, moment of them all was when when Harley um, made contact with Dinah, along with uh, Renee, because already you know she just lost her job. Yeah, you know, she had to wear her, her T-shirt because due to that chase scene where Harley was just about to grab her famous, or at this rate, her favorite egg sandwich, you know, for breakfast at a local liquor store. Led to a chase scene. A bunch of guys hated her because after what she did to them. And, <laughs> you know, she actually threw garbage at her, trying to get away from them all. And so she just wanted to continue with the case. But she just couldn't. So she, apparently, um, she decided to join in with uh, Dinah and Helena to go all the way to um, the hideouts uh, of Joker's and Harley Quinn's uh, you know, fun house, where all of a sudden that's where Black Mass sends out a bunch of guys who are about to go after them. You know. Not just them alone, but also because of Cass, because they just want to get the diamond. So, there you have it. <laughs> um, I really enjoy it, though. I mean, it's hilarious at times. Um, it, it definitely has a lot of uh, extensive uh, violence and a bit of gore here and there. Um, definitely R-rated right there. Lots of profanity that's put in, so it's nice to see that, yes, we're now getting another DC uh, Extended Universe R-rated. So now we're actually getting an R-rated uh, DC Extended Universe film that really uh, nails it to the punch. Uh, Margot Robbie, definitely, no doubt, I mean, she's just as sexy, sassy, funny persona that she was given for this movie and she really nailed it she stole the show it's essentially her movie I mean she did exactly what she was going for considering that she pretty much introduced the the team of the birds of prey which I know birds of prey was was based on an actual DC comic which actually had a short-lived TV series that aired on the WB and I think that could have been a lot better handled there but because actually the the short-lived TV show was was excellent on its own I mean it was more serious 
It was it had an ex, such an amazing story that sad to say I wish the series had lasted longer. Yeah, but I guess WB was just having some tough times, you know, you know, having to focus on other shows, you know, schedule conflicts that they're going through. I mean, I guess because, you know, they were still, they still had Buffy and and uh, Angel, and they were afraid because this show was going to take over their lineup. So that's how they moved it to the UPN. If, if that was the case, um, but anyway, um, but this one, I, I like the cast that they chose, I mean, they got Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she's excellent as the Huntress, um, I know they were joking around with her too, which I thought that was pretty fun, <laughs> but she is definitely a vigilante who's trying to stop um, the mob family who actually killed her family, as a act of revenge so now she finally gets the job done um, just shooting all these crossbow arrows at them then you got um, Black Canary you know played by uh, Jeanette Smollett Bell she did an excellent job I mean there's even a very uh, particular scene which I'm not gonna give away but it's something that you're gonna be so amazed when you see her that's incredible powerful incredibly powerful but yeah she is indeed what she is but she can do a lot of kicks and and jumps and do everything a lot of oppressive moves and uh, Rosie Perez playing Renee Matoya felt bad for her too because you know the way she's been treated you know by um, Captain Patrick Erickson you know it was played by Stephen Williams I mean Apparently he wants to get all the credits, joining in with um, his uh, assistant uh, DA. I mean, they they didn't want her to be on the case. You know, they wanted her to move on through all of that. But you know, she was being very cynical about it. But she just wants to continue, so that way she'll be able to get her promotion and to save her own job. But that's not working out. That sucks, because she's she had a long case trying to go after Black Mask. But anyway, I mean she wasn't getting along with Harley at first. That's what led to that. But now they became part of the team to join in with uh, Black Canary and the Huntress. So that's why they're called Birds of Prey. <laughs> um, Your McGregor, on the other hand, um, yeah, he definitely. Um, Brings in an excellent performance. He's a total narcissistic, um, brutal, and iron fist crime lord who can pretty much do anything he wants. I mean, he owns his own nightclub. He gets to bring in all the ladies and guys. He collects a lot of animal trophies in his room. I mean, wow. I mean, you can tell how sadistic he is. And that's certainly the case here. Um, and L.J. Brasco... Um, was a right as uh, Cassandra Cain. I mean, basically, what she is just a kid who just loves to go around stealing a lot of stuff everywhere she goes. Yeah. Basically, what it is. A lot of great scenes, though, here and there. I mean, I love the, the fun house scene, you know, where you know, Harley. Just brought in the mallet, just taking down all these bad guys around <laughs> that are chasing them. And also some nice impressive scenes uh, you know, with Black Canary, the Huntress, and and Renee. <laughs> so they're just going around you know, beating the crap out of them, trying to save Cass from Black Mask. About to go chase after him. Um, I, I love that parody where it was a take on Marilyn Monroe's... Um, Film, which I know that's where I had the song "Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend." I, yeah, where you just have Harley Quinn, basically being Marilyn Monroe. A very nice touch here. <laughs> um, trying to go as classy as they could be, and sometimes you know they can even go pretty uh, psychedelic in a way for its filmmaking. All done by the direction of Kathy Yan. 
She did an amazing job. Uh, the writing, in my opinion, I thought it was kind of top notch. I mean, she actually had through a lot of, a lot of crazy, you know, wall to wall uh, dialogue here and there that's really immensely uh, threatening, but also, again, satirical, funny. Gives it a lot of great humor and a lot of uh, incredible violence they put into it. A lot of energy. I thought it really uh, totally works for a movie that's uh, based on that particular adaptation of a DC comic. As we all know. <laughs> so. But all in all, I, I really enjoyed it and I think this was the best they could do. Uh, in fact, it's it's even better than I expected, and it's definitely worth um, the marketing, the hype, everything that went into. Definitely part of the DC extended universe that we got, and you know what? It's going to get better as it turns out. So anyway, that's Birds of Prey, and I give the movie four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.